<laughs> what better character to break down during Halloween week than one with a jack-o'-lantern as a head? Marvel's jack-o'-lantern is similar to other villains such as the Green Goblin or Hobgoblin in that he flies around on a form of glider, or in this case, a one-man hovercraft or pogo platform as it's known, which allows him to fly, or I guess more fittingly, bounce. He also utilizes various Halloween-themed weapons and gadgets, such as pumpkin bombs which is another staple of the goblin-type characters. In many ways, Jack-O-Lantern reminds me of the Headless Horseman from English folklore, one that depicts him with a flaming or brightly lit pumpkin head that is. Jack-O-Lantern debuted for Marvel Comics in Machine Man No. 19 from February of 1981, two years before the Hobgoblin's first appearance. His real name was Jason Masondale, an ex-U.S. Marine and later CIA agent who was discharged due to his brutal methods and violent tendencies. Afterwards, he would become an international mercenary and terrorist, donning the identity of Jack-O-Lantern. Anyone deciding to dress up like this to kill people has to have a few screws loose. Jack-O-Lantern's first appearance with Spider-Man occurred in Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man No. 56 from July of 1981, when Peter is taking pictures of Masondale as he is being brought to the hospital following one of his battles with Machine Man. Hilariously, when the doctor goes to check on him, the officer on duty informs him that they couldn't find a way to remove his costume. Even the EKG struggles to find a pulse in there. How hard can it really be to take that off? Advanced tech or not, look at the damn thing. Masondale sits up like something out of Halloween or Friday the 13th, thanks to a hollow tooth which holds the coma-inducing pill, of course, and takes the entire hospital hostage with his men. Jack-O-Lantern faces off against Spider-Man and is defeated fairly easily once the hero manages to get close. Shortly afterwards, Masondale would return, this time allying himself with the Hobgoblin, which was actually a brainwashed Ned Leeds, the real Hobgoblin, Roderick Kingsley was using. Their partnership turned sour though, with Leeds ending up dead and Masondale becoming the new Hobgoblin. Though in Spider-Man Hobgoblin Lives No. 1 from 1997, Masondale would be killed while in prison by Kingsley, who took back his title and left Jason a burnt skeleton. The second Jack-O-Lantern debuted in Captain America No. 396 from January of 1992, while Jason Masondale was acting as the Hobgoblin. This Jack-O-Lantern was Stephen Mark Levins, and much like the first, acted as a mercenary, originally part of the Red Skull's skeleton crew. Levins' Jack-O-Lantern was short-lived, and by that, I mean he didn't make many appearances. He fought the likes of Captain America and Union Jack, even having his head blown off by Punisher during the events of Civil War, but not much else. He was recently revived into a clone body by the Jackal, and went up against the Prowler and later Deadpool, but again, very brief appearances that didn't really go anywhere. Before the last incarnation had enough time to settle in, Marvel would rebrand the Jack-O-Lantern character yet again, a few years after the Levens version debuted, now calling him Mad Jack. What caused confusion and even a bit of controversy was that both Mad Jack and the Levens Jack-O-Lantern existed within the Marvel Universe at the same time. Why? Because it seemed Marvel had no idea what to do with the character. Anyways, Mad Jack was revealed as two people, the second Mysterio, Daniel Burkhart, and Maguire Beck, the cousin of the original Mysterio, Quentin Beck. The fourth Jack-O-Lantern, or is it the fifth in terms of person behind the mask, ah, whatever, is the unnamed brother of Stephen Levins, who as an act of revenge for his brother's death, murdered the 15-year-old daughter of his neighbor and drank her blood in a pact with Satan. As a result, he is given twisted powers like the ability to conjure bats, survive gunfire to the head, and turn his body into cockroaches. Fun stuff all around. Following him was another darker version of Jack-O-Lantern that debuted in the second volume of Venom from the early 2010s. This one was an assassin employed by Crime Master who resembled a Jack-O-Lantern even without his helmet. As a boy, he trick-or-treated at Crime Master's house, who knocked him out with gas and kidnapped him. At first he was scared, but was manipulated and began to believe Crime Master was his real father, that he was always his father, waiting for him to find him. 
He would return to his birth parents later after being turned into a killer by Crime Master and murdered them, scooping the insides of their heads out and replacing the contents with candles, something that would become a staple of his kills moving forward, but always remember Marvel is for kids. This version of Jack-O-Lantern is definitely the creepiest of them all. He would face off against the Flash Thompson Venom and eventually be killed by Deadpool with the help of Black Panther after getting shot in the face. This jack-o'-lantern may be dead currently, but he might come back someday, you can never tell with comics. At first and for the longest time, jack-o'-lantern felt like a rip-off Green Goblin. The similar costume, pumpkin and Halloween motif, he was like a diet version of the character to be used in between major storylines acting as second fiddle, thrown in with Hobgoblin occasionally, which in and of itself was designed to be a replacement for the original Green Goblin because the Spider-Man writers felt that they had pulled from that well one too many times before. But Jack-O-Lantern's later incarnations have proven to be fairly successful and memorable, giving him more of an identity and helping him stand out from the rest. Does that mean Jack-O-Lantern is a phenomenal character in my eyes? No, but like I have mentioned time and time again with some of these villains, I think Jack-O-Lantern has a lot of untapped potential. Is he gimmicky? Of course, he uses the Halloween setting, especially later versions, but that's what makes him so damn fun. I already mentioned Jack-O-Lantern's pogo platform and use of pumpkin bombs, but depending on which incarnation of him you are looking at, he does have a few specific abilities and weapons. His earlier appearances made use of wrist-mounted launchers that could fire grenades at his enemies. He also had ghost grabbers, which were semi-transparent films that could stick to and tangle up his victims. The Burkhardt Beck version of Mad Jack could make use of Mysterio's illusion technology, making J. Jonah Jameson trip balls, though previous incarnations also utilized hallucinogens. And all depictions of Jack-O-Lantern, for the most part, wore a special pumpkin-shaped helmet featuring 360-degree scanning, infrared, and telescopic imaging. It uses stage fire which is why the wearer isn't affected by the flames, and was also bulletproof apparently. And finally, as you could already tell by previous images in this video, the newest incarnation of Jack-O-Lantern rode around on a jet-powered broomstick, a fun nod to the Green Goblin's original appearance. What do you guys think of Jack-O-Lantern? Make sure to let me know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon to be notified of all future content, support me on Patreon, and share it if you'd be so kind. Stay tuned all week long leading up to Halloween for more grisly characters and comics. There is plenty more to come. <laughs>